mabuhay, or in kapampangan nuwid kayo. Welcome to the second video in a three-part series on Andres Bonifacio. Today, we will be talking about the myth, the misconceptions, and the little-known facts about the father of the Philippine Revolution, starting with his roots. At number one, although there are barely any known surviving records of his early life, many scholars, community elders, and local institutions agree that Andres Bonifacio was of Kabapangan blood. He is believed to be a native of Tondo, which has historically been part of the traditional Kapampangan homeland. In fact, up to the 1960s, many parts of Tondo remained Kapampangan, and many of Bonifacio's descendants through his cousins, still speak Kapampangan and still identify as Kapampangans and still call in Dung Kapampangan or the present-day province of Pampanga their home. Bonifacio was also a Freemason and his Masonic name was Sinuquan, aka the Almighty Sun God of the Kapampangan mythology. Hat number two. Bonifacio was not born poor, nor was he purely of Indio or native ancestry. His family was part of the working middle class, and they were also of mestizo or mixed heritage. But this does not mean that he did not experience the struggles and the injustices of an oppressive colonial society. In fact, since the age of 14, he was already the breadwinner of his family, juggling different jobs to provide for his siblings. And by the time the revolution started, his family had already risen up to the upper middle class. All because of his hard work and perseverance. So in our words today, Bonifacio can be considered as a successful young professional. And this did not stop him from championing the cause of the people. Number 3. Contrary to popular belief instigated by his jealous rivals, Andres Bonifacio was not bobo. He was not illiterate or uneducated. Although formally he only finished primary education, Bonifacio was self-taught. He expanded his knowledge and wisdom beyond the confines of the traditional academia, beyond the four walls of a classroom. He was in fact a great writer and was always seen with a book in his free time. He enjoyed reading books about French Revolution, about law, about medicine, and novels like Le Miserable and Jose Rizal's own No Limitangere and El Filibusterismo. And he was also a part-time theater actor. He was a well-rounded, very talented Renaissance man. He was, after all, a brilliant, well-respected, and beloved leader of his people. Number 4. Despite his so-called poor military leadership, Andres Bonifacio was not hot-tempered, and he did not attack without aim or purpose. He was actually a gifted strategist who made use of indigenous tactics and the resources found in his surroundings. He used mountains and other geographical features to their advantage, and many historians have also described him as a military strategist specializing in guerrilla warfare. So basically, in our words today, he was great at making lemonade when life threw lemons at his face. He was brilliant in making the most out of a bad situation and in overcoming adversity and misfortune. And lastly, but certainly not the least, at number 5, the most popular image of Andres Bonifacio is something like this. A man in his camisa de chino with a red scarf or red handkerchief wrapped around his neck and sometimes with a bolo knife in his hand. But did you know that this image is nothing but a romanticized mythical imagination? It does not have any factual historic or scientific evidence behind it. It was purely an artistic imagination. A beautiful but inaccurate image from a 1970s textbook that caught on into the mainstream consciousness. And although red is the color of the Katipunan and the revolution, this outfit of a white shirt with a red scarf around the neck paired with red pants is actually a traditional clothing of the Basque people from what is now northern Spain and southern France. There is actually no reliable evidence that this was the outfit of the Katipuneros. And in reality, we only have one known picture of God Andres Bonifacio. And it is this. 
wearing a formal suit and tie in a photograph from the 1890s. According to scholars, and because of his professional life, it is more likely for Bonifacio to be seen in public wearing a formal suit and tie than wearing a camisa or a camiseta. And although Bonifacio likely had bolos, in reality he was skilled in fighting with firearms. Just like his Capamban ancestors who first fought Spanish invaders with native-made firearms in the epic battle of Banco Sai back in 1571. It was only in the 20th century romanticized images of Bonifacio that his revolver was replaced with an iconic bolo and his formal suit and tie was replaced with a camisa de chino and a red scarf. If you look closely at his monument sculpted by the great national artist Guillermo Tolentino, you can see that Andres Bonifacio is depicted in what appears to be a beautifully embroidered Baron Capampangan with a revolver in one hand and a bolo in the other. And that is it for me today. On the third and final part of this series, we will talk about the death and the legacy of the great supremo God Andres Bonifacio. So tune in and see you next time. Or in Kapampangan, Niki Dix! And in Tagalog, Kita Kits! Bye!